flower horn right here. If we can get a thousand likes on this video, can we get a thousand likes on this video? If we can get a thousand likes on this video, I will buy this fish right here. Well, it is summertime here in Texas. And when I say summertime, it is so hot. We want to talk about the record heat in Texas. It's so intense, it caused the road to buckle. The weather is also putting a strain on the state's power grid. Heat in Texas really won't change much the next couple of days. 106 Wednesday, 104 Thursday. As you can see, it is stupid hot here. And well, with the warm weather comes pond time. And we're kind of late into the pond season, but that's okay. Today, we're going to be revitalizing this front porch pond, cleaning it up, getting it set back up, and we're going to stock it with fish today. So if you love these pond videos make sure you drop a like and if you're not subscribed go ahead and do that as well and with that guys let's not waste any more time let's get out and get this pond set back up so we can get some fish All right, guys, well, now that we have the pond in place and it's cleaned out, we're gonna go ahead and start working on this filtration. Now, this is a pretty simplistic DIY filter box, and I'm gonna go ahead and roll some footage here on how I put this together. Okay, so we have our slit for our skimmer cut. Now, the problem with this slit is, is that fish can actually swim through this. I took the plastic, cut it a little larger, and then I used these little notches to kind of weave it in and out. And then tucking that in there, which keeps it in place without having to use glues or anything like that that could be dangerous to the fish. And this will serve the purpose. So we have the filter box where it needs to sit. We're gonna go ahead and plug the hose into it, as well as we're gonna hide the hose. But this thing is now in place, so let's see how it works. Oh. All right, well, we have the hose pretty much hid. We have the filter box in here. We have the lava rock back in there. So let's see what happens when we plug this thing in. So now we have essentially created a mechanical filtration system to attach to our biological fall in the front door pond. Now we're gonna get this thing back together with that filter box there. You can't even actually see it looking at it from this side. It is already sucking debris up inside of there. So now that you know how I put this together, we are actually gonna upgrade the pump today. And the reason for that is this right here is a 110 gallon pump per hour. And we wanna go ahead and upgrade that because there's never enough flow out of this waterfall. So we're gonna get rid of that. So what we've decided to do is run out to Harbor Freight. And I know Harbor Freight sells a bunch of cheap tools and things like that, but they have a good selection of pond pumps. And we're gonna go ahead and give that a try because they're a lot cheaper than say Home Depot. And these Home Depot pumps don't seem to last more than about a season. So we've picked this one up here. And what this is, is it's a Creekstone brand, 200 gallon per hour. It has a four and a half foot maximum lift which basically means that it can pump water four and a half foot up into this waterfall head. So we're gonna go ahead and give this thing a try. This thing was like $25, which is about half the price almost of what you would pay at Home Depot. So we're gonna give this a try this season and see how long this one lasts. So let's go ahead and get this in and get this filtration system set back up. We now have our filter box back together and we're gonna go ahead and clean this up a little bit and then we're gonna get this thing back in there. All right, well, it's time to fill this thing with water and it is disgusting and dirty. So we're gonna drain it and fill it and drain it and fill it until we get this water clear. Well, as this is filling, we're gonna go ahead and add some products from API, starting with some Aqua Essential. This is gonna dechlorinate this water that is going into this setup. And we're also gonna use some API Quick Start, which is a liquid bacteria, which will allow for the immediate addition of fish. It is recommended that you cycle your tank for longer before you add the fish, but this will allow the instant addition of fish. Plus, I'm hoping we can get this water dechlorinated before it kills all of the beneficial bacteria that already exist. Plus, in the waterfall head, that has pre-cycled material in it. All right, guys, before we head out to get plants, we're actually going to take some of our plants from inside of our fish room. And we're going to start with some of this amazing parrot's feather. And this parrot's feather 
is great if it's legal in your state. Oh my gosh, look at that big clump of Christmas moss that this is connected to. Let's see if we can get all this undone here. There we go. So we're gonna take some of, a couple of strands of this parrot's feather. And I've been growing this for some time in the fish room just for use in ponds and things of that nature. So this will be great. So we're gonna take some parrot's feather. We have some hornwort we're gonna take. We'll throw some anacris out there as well, just letting it float. And I think that will be good from there. I also have a golden pothos that I've been growing underwater and this thing looks great. We're gonna go ahead and take this and we're gonna put this out there as well. Another piece of that golden pothos. All right, well, let's start by throwing some of this hornwort in here. And then we're gonna plant a couple of these parrot's feathers. Plant this stuff down here in the end, getting it fully buried in the substrate. And this stuff will do really well. So once it acclimates, it'll start to actually stand up completely in this pond, providing hides and things of that nature for fish. And then of course, we're just gonna float this golden pothos in here and some of this anacris. This anacris will take off and start growing really well. Kind of keep this stuff down here just to uh, Kind of keep this area open for some actual planted plants and the reason for that is is i have a plan for this pond on top of what we're doing today so you'll have to come back to a video coming up soon to see why we want to keep this stuff down here because this stuff starts to mat kind of as it stands up and it gives kind of a terrestrial area and we'll talk about that in the next video we also have some of these red root floaters that are in here that that will take off and start doing really well also okay well with that let's go ahead and get out and get us some additional plants for this setup as well as go ahead and get us some fish all right guys well we have all of that parrot's feather and all those other plants into that pond and now it's just time to go pick up some additional plants and some fish so we're gonna jump into the jeep here and we're gonna get out of here so i will pick you guys back up at my fish wholesaler Alright guys, well we're here to pick up some fish and as I was talking about earlier, it is hot. Do you see this right here? That's the sun and it's literally 10,000 degrees outside today. So make sure you like this video because I'm going to sweat just to make this content for you. Let's get in here, pick out some fish, grab a few plants, and get back to the house to cool these guys off because, uh, well, they're going to be in a spa on the way home. Well guys, I think we're going to go with some bacopa today as well as some... Let's see, how about some Amazon swords? They look great in the bottom, they do really well. So let's go ahead and get these bagged up and let's take a look at some fish and see what we're gonna put in here with this. See this flower horn right here? This dude is massive. I mean, he, his head's gotta be this big around, which is like at least the size of a tennis ball. An amazing fish. So if we can get a thousand likes on this video, can we get a thousand likes on this video? If we get a thousand likes on this video, I will buy this fish right here. All right, guys. Well, I think what we're going to do is turn this into a tetra pond. And, well, you just saw all these tetra, so let's get back to the house and see what all we've got. All right, guys, well, we made it back with our fish and our plants, and before we do anything, I wanna go ahead and get these bags floating in here to temperature acclimate them, because they are going into this outside pond, and it is probably much warmer water than what was at the wholesaler. As well as get these plants that we're putting in here planted on top of what's already in here. I wanna show you some footage real quick. I put some Danios in here the other day. I, I needed a place for them and this was a perfect setup for them. So there are some Danios in there. In fact, let's take a look at that footage. So those Danios are in here, as well as the plants we put in here the other day. So we're gonna put our new plants in here today, as well as go ahead and get these bags in here, and then we'll talk about what we have as we release these new fish into this front porch pond. So as far as the plants go, obviously we do not have to acclimate them necessarily, but we're gonna go ahead and plant some Amazon swords in here today. 
And then we're gonna also plant some of this bacopa. And bacopa is really nice in an outdoor setup because it grows so well and it provides a lot of ground cover as well as cover for possible fry that you may have. So this really isn't gonna be aquascaped. We're gonna just take this stuff and randomly push this stuff down in here, giving some cover here and there, just so the different types of fish have places to hide if they want. But there's no method to the madness here. I'm not trying to create some articulate aquascape. I just want some plants in here. Now, because this is a silica-based substrate, there is no nutrition in this substrate, so we will have to actually treat this pond with some sort of liquid feed for these plants. So we'll use some API products such as Leaf Zone and CO2 Booster to help with that. So now that we have these plants in here, go ahead and acclimate these fish and go ahead and start talking about what kind of fish we got today. All right, well, hopefully you like this pond and all the fish that went into it. Oh my gosh, it is so hot. Do you see how hot it is? I mean, it literally feels like, whoa. Yeah, it feels like that. Okay, well, well, now that we're back, listen, hopefully you went on to enjoy this video and you like the fish that we put in there. We put some lamp eye tetras, some white skirt tetras, black skirt tetras, all kinds of tetras in here. And if you saw at the very first of the video and then in the middle, I challenge you guys to get me to a thousand likes on this video. If I do, I will go back and buy the $400 flower horn. That thing looks absolutely epic. So let's try to get there. So with that, guys, thank you so very much for watching. Thanks for all the support. If you would like, you can follow me on Facebook and Instagram. Links to both are below. You can also visit freshwaterscrub.com to pick up some Christopher Scott merch. I'm truly grateful for each and every one of you and a new video will be coming out within the next few days, I promise. So with that guys, we will see you next time.